What's going on, guys? This is Mike Sabbath, and I'm here with Gallo, the guy you know in Chicago. What's up? It's Nick Gallo, Gallo, the guy you know. I'm here with the, the man of the hour, Mike Sabbath. Bro, how are you? Mike Sabbath. I'm great. I'm great, Nick. Nice to meet you, man. Yes, Thank yes. you for having me. Definitely, definitely. Hello, everyone at home. <laughs> Nick, Nick just gave me this pillow. Is what just happened. <laughs> love it. I love this <laughs> pillow. I was just saying now I can now I can finally sleep with myself. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But anyway, <laughs> you know, bro, it's been a journey for you. Yeah. Like, and in a short amount of time, you've accomplished a lot. I know it's just starting for you, but like your story, you've been doing it. So how does it feel, like, just to see everything now? like really working now that you are at the forefront as well. It's crazy, man. Um, I mean, yeah, it's been, I mean, for everyone, it's always, it's always such a long, it's always such a longer journey than we feel. It's, you know, it's like everyone out there doing all this stuff. It's like, it's like for me, like I started when I was a baby, you know, the lollipop drum, pots and pans, my family bringing the pans mm -hmm. down. And I was just in love with music always. It was my, my vessel for it was my place to express always mm -hmm. since I was a little baby and you know went from the possum pants to my first muse which was Carly in yeah. first in, in elementary school we were <laughs> elementary school crushes she's my she, and you know she inspired the Carly song <laughs> which started my songwriting career I love you Carly <laughs> I love that. and um, she was actually just at we just played at elsewhere in New okay. York in Brooklyn and she came and it was so fun that's, <laughs> that's awesome um, yeah, man. So, yeah. So, it was just long journey, obsessed with recording. And then, yeah, man, it's just a journey. I was with, I was working for years, like, flying out whenever I could, like, go to L.A. from New York, from New York, from upstate, slightly upstate New York. And, um, yeah, man, we would, I would leave school early on a Friday, occasionally, fly to L.A., have no idea what was occurring, but just, like, <laughs> Me and my manager at the time, we would just be there on walk. We, we, we'd be like Hollywood Boulevard, right? Like literally when I was yeah. like 16, we would like walk up and down Hollywood Boulevard, we became friends with all of the the, the, the the city tour people. It was incredible. And we would like literally go to studios. Yeah. But, um, you know, also, you know, you're on the My 21st Century Blues tour with Ray. I know she's a good friend of yours. You yes. killed this album together. You killed the stage tonight as well. Thank like, you. how does it feel just having it? Because, you know, COVID was, was crazy. You know, everything yeah. you could make, you really couldn't, you know, express yourself yeah. only through, like, virtual concerts or... But those only went so far. Yeah. So how does it feel, like, just to be back out there now, like, performing and showing what you've been working on? No, it feels... Incredible. I mean, this. I mean, this is really. This is my first time on a tour of any yeah. kind. So I mean, like, I obviously I grew up performing at like mm -hmm. functions and like all that. But like, I've always only really gotten to express myself in the studio for yeah. the most part. You know what I mean? Like, I grew up doing the little vibes, but always recording, recording, recording during the pandemic, recording, recording, recording. But yeah, this is my first time on a tour of any kind. So yeah, no, it feels incredible. And the craziest thing is, is. We get to play. I mean, this music that I've been working on with the Moon Girls and this album for so long, getting to perform it in this way and get to perform it for pe crowds of beautiful people and Rays fans are unreal. Yeah. And so just getting to go out there to like a full house every night is incredible. And then to do that and then to watch Ray play the album that we created with all these people that are there to just see her and hear that music and just have connected with it is just like, it's so surreal. It's like we play, yeah. it's like it's like I get to experience both sides of what I've been working on my uh -huh. whole life in the same night. Like being yeah. on this tour specifically is so magical for that. It's like I get to do our set and then I literally just get to watch the album, like our baby, yeah. get, get played and be loved by all these people and people singing the lyrics and Ray just, it's so powerful for her and it's so powerful for all the fans and it's just like, it's surreal. It's yeah, amazing. It's, it's surreal. a dream. Like, it's a dream. Seen it all come to light. It just it's so dope. So happy for both of you. Thank but, you. But you know, I know you recorded 
my 21st century blues in a log cabin in Utah. So where did you record being human that's about to drop April 28th? Yes. So it came from a different, a, a few places. So okay. it started when I was, I, I, during the pandemic, okay. um, I needed a place to express. I just needed to like be out of LA. I needed to be near my family. So I ended up building a studio in my brother's backyard. He like had a little shed. So I built a studio in there, a place for me to be vulnerable and be with my family. And that was where Being Human, the song was born. But at that, it was the first song that I made in that place. Once I had everything plugged in, mm -hmm. I just was like, I had so much built up in me. I just needed to like, just like let it out yeah. and it just poured out into being human which is the first song i dropped yeah. for the record and i at the time i didn't necessarily know that it was going to turn into a whole a whole album yeah. so i made that song and then a few months later i was asked to do this little festival and i was like still coming out of the pandemic shell yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> so i was like you know and it, it felt super important that i did it so i said yes and i was like all right i need a band <laughs> And that was how I ended up forming the Moon Girls as well. Yeah, Rachel, bye-bye. I love you. Oh, bye, love you. Oh, she love got, you. She won her pillow. I, got, I gave her a pillow just oh, in case. Oh, he made you a pillow. Do you want a pillow? I made one just in case. Yes. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi, I love you. I've got a 6 a.m. wake up tomorrow. I love you. I've got a 6 a.m. flight. Bye. You killed her. Oh, Yeah, Thanks for the third. This is insane. <laughs> Thanks, man. We are pretty gonna take this in the car. Thank you. Bye, Mike. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye, Mike. Thank you. Bye, Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. 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 Bye.
great, beautiful, spontaneous, unexpected things from occurring. Like if I was like being human, the song needs to be on the album like this, then it wouldn't have yeah. been strung through the album like it is now, which it, now it's like a backbone mm -hmm. because it needed this shape where it is in the album. Yeah. It needed to come back down here. So it's, it plays that role and it comes in a, in a different form as well. It's yeah. like more broken down than the version that's out right now. So yeah, it just came from us. I was like playing the record and he was like, maybe it's like an interlude. And I was like, ah, it's not an interlude, but like there's something with that, what you're saying. And then when I was playing it and like shaping the rest of the album, like I was like, oh, like, it's two parts. <laughs> yeah. Like it's like this thing and it's like this and it ended up just playing beautifully. It just play, carries the emotion right. I love you did that. Yeah. I, I'm so happy you did that because I don't see that enough. And they bring me back to my earlier days of music i feel yeah. like i love that you do. i can't wait to hear it all like yeah. i'm pumped for it and another thing i was pumped to see your tv television debut on the late late show with james corden how Shout out james yeah corden. We love you. how was it just i mean because that's a huge deal bro that's yeah that's crazy yeah how was how how were you feeling just, and you killed it i mean y'all killed it that night thank you man it was incredible Honestly, it's so fun. I mean, playing with my band is just yeah. is 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 a family activity. So any, and this is all like for like, cause you know, a couple years ago when I was like having some like tastes of it mm -hmm. and like doing like as a feature and stuff like that, like it's amazing. But it's like to be able to do all this with your friend, like with your best friends, is just yeah. ridiculous. It's like priceless. You can't. It's ridiculous. So like, you know, we pull up James Corden, we're like all in the car. We're like, what's going on? Like, yeah. and, and when we like pull up as a unit, it's just powerful. And people are just like having the best time around us. James was super lovely. The sound people, honestly, the people who worked on that sound like uh -huh. were the nicest, most helpful sound people I've ever worked with. They were like sitting with us with like everything. Like we sent them a whole brief of what we wanted with uh -huh. the video and they were doing all that. Like perfectly, they like set up the fish eye and uh -huh. just were. They were just. It was an incredible. It was so fun and it's so real. And I was also slightly under the weather, so I had to like yeah. tap in and just like push through it, which was also an important experience to have. And it was just fun, dude. It was so fun. And the crowd honestly was fire. It was it was, it was crazy because like with TV, it's like hard. Yeah, because you don't know. Because they're also like and they're audience. also like over there. Uh -huh. They're like far. <laughs> They're like yeah. over there sitting, yes. but they ended up just catching a vibe. It was fire. So it was just, it was, a, it was a very good experience. Yeah. yeah. And the single, I mean, Sorry. who you are, I mean, that song, it gets the crowd. Like you said, yes, they don't, know. if they don't know, and now they know, you know what I'm saying? Like, how do you feel having that is really like, I feel like you're, you're all breakout single right now. I feel yeah. that is... I mean, it's a feel-good song. And I'm not hating on, you know, there's times where, like you said, being human, we go through a lot of things. But the feel-good music, it feels good again to have it more because I feel like we almost lost the es essence of it a I lot think, of times. I agree, man. Like, I think people are ready to, I think people, I mean, in general, it's like people are ready to feel just honesty in general. Mm -hmm. It's like any art that is honest is going to hit right now because it's just like there's just so much dishonesty in culture yeah. and just in the world and it's just like we're just we're just not we just we just want someone to be honest and like for me like in that moment with who you are like that was me being honest in that groove and that disco feel is just like and i just yeah i love that record and i mean yeah and that that record came about so crazy because i that piano line yeah i actually had made that when i was working in the producer seat when i was i was working on camila's record no really that's crazy we were in brooklyn and before she got to the studio, I was like playing. I just like went to this like tack piano in the back and I was just like, dun, 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 dun. and I recorded it and uh -huh. I played it for her. I was like, this is, and we were both like, wait, it was like not at all <laughs> yeah. what we were doing, but I was, but I just loved it. And I had it for like a while. I was like, this is hitting. And then when I was at a different studio in Brooklyn, I was with, and it was like a, actually like a family night. It was like, uh -huh. I had like my brother, my cousins, like bunch of friends came to the studio and we were just jamming and we were all playing like some vibes were happening and he was at the keys and I was like bro and I was like D -d -d -d. I was like just taught him the thing and yeah. then he like touched it up a little bit and then we started playing it and then we recorded it and we were like we just like recorded the vibe and we were like wait yeah I was like this is hitting we were like about to go home and I was like wait play one more time <laughs> I was like I was like oh shit and I was like all right let me go in. and I just like went into the booth 
and ended up just writing it that night. That was yeah. it. It's like it just like was born at at the, at the right time, and it was so fun. Oh, that's, that's an awesome story. Just to know like how the song came to light. So, and, and I love hearing that like when it just comes sporadically. It didn't. And you know what I'm saying? It's not like you were planning. You were just kind of, yeah. yo, this is a beat. I like this. And I mean, it was just the piano. It was literally yeah. just. Piano. I mean, well, what's what's beautiful is even just thinking about it now. It's like that was a family experience, and it was like 20 people in the studio. And we were all just like. <laughs> there's nothing they can say you know we're just like vibing and it's like that energy translates here yes. it's like when we play that record mm-hmm. it's like all of a sudden and like currently that's at the end of the set and it's like it's just by that point it's like the whole place is a big family it's like we're all just vibing we're all like you know fuck it yeah. <laughs> there's nothing they can say it's just For hitting real, yeah like, it is it's a feel good like that song needs to be played at every like wedding every event it just gets you like that's the type of song i feel when people are like sitting down and bored and it turns on and you just everyone automatically gets up it's like one of them songs and it's rare because today you don't i mean i don't know the new wave of music it's, it's different you know i know times change so i get it but you're bringing it back i love it i love it but um i want to do some you know rapid fire nothing crazy but yeah um but hold on let me ch- make sure i just want to check and we'll go on Make sure we're good. We're good. Okay. We're back. Okay, so we'll do some rapid fire. You know, nothing crazy. Uh, Just gonna. (laughs) Okay. Um, You gotta (laughs) gotta get prepared. You gotta. Oh wait, there's this happening first. First, okay, the mom just got, <laughs> got a couple letters, so start there. Then, yep, yes, yes. See, I had, I had to rap. rap. <laughs> I had to rap. Come on, let's I go. It. I got the, I, I got the Jordans it. on. The Jordans? Yeah. I'm ready. I'm here. I'm ready, right? Okay. okay. So first, what was your first job? Um, I was a like. I was I picked up after my brother. I was DJ Sabs. He started the DJ Sabs business in middle school. So I DJed little like town events. Okay. Yep. Go, go. Who was your celeb crush growing up? Growing up, my celeb crush. I mean, the first thing that popped in my head, like if I'm going like young, young, uh-huh. was Vanessa Hudgens because High School Musical. I was like, okay. she's yeah, she's was, fire. Yeah. <laughs> when I was young, young. Yeah. yeah. Um, what animal would you be in another life? A uh, <sighs> wow, makes you think, right? It does. I mean, I have a couple answers, but I'm gonna give a you yeah. well, give me your top three. Okay, I would be interested in being like a pelican. Okay, I feel like pelicans fly so beautifully and they just mm-hmm. vibe and then they swoop down and they get their food uh-huh. and they're just like I just, and being a bird would just be a vibe I think in general so a pelican I would be interested in being I would also be interested in being like like a I'm a, I keep seeing whale so what? maybe I guess I want to be a whale in some, that, in makes s- sense. that makes sense though because you want to see like water and because yeah, like think about that whole life yeah that's a whole nother life yeah, like we don't know yeah I'm interested in, in the flight I'm interested in exploring the water and kind of be chilling because the whales are chilling. Like they're just like, they're good. Yeah. You know, except for what humans are doing to them. Exactly. But, um, <laughs> yeah. And then I'd probably be interested in being like a, oh, like maybe like a chameleon. To be honest, chameleons are interesting. Like to be able to vibe and like become a jacket. Yeah. Would hit. Something like that. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about those, but I feel... But those are three good, like... I feel interesting about that. Yeah. I feel, the, good. I feel pretty good about that. Okay. Yeah. That's what I got right now. I, I like. I like. Um, what time of the day are you most inspired? Um, really, really, really early morning, like like as sun is rising, and probably late, and probably late night. Probably like the sides the of sides. the day. Okay. Probably, actually. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where do you go when you want to be alone? Um... Nature. Nature? Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. More and more, the older I get, it's weird. Like Nature with nature barefoot. Yeah. Grounding. It's real. Yes. We're supposed to touch that earth, baby. Mm-hmm. 
Something you do. <laughs> this hippie motherfucker. <laughs> oh, something you do or love that would surprise people. Um, something I do or love that would surprise people. Well, I when I was five years old, my my mom and I made me a business card called Musical Magical Michael because I also I did magic as much as I did music until I was like thirteen. That's awesome. So I'm like. I'm deeply into magic. I like magic a lot. Yo, that's dope for like tour and yeah, th- it's gonna be integrated for that's sure. But yeah, magic, everything. magic. That's, that's sick. Musical magical, Michael. <laughs> Hello. I love that. Um, do you believe in aliens? I I mean, there's a very 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 high chance that there's other li- other yeah. life. I mean, there's I mean, we've been seeing things. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what's happening with what yeah. we've been seeing, but. There's just, in my opinion, there's one, there's a, a 99.999 repeated percent chance that there is other life. There's other life that some of them could be nice and some of them, you know, I don't know. You know, I feel like if they're here, if they come visit, it's like, because I think about it, it's like from our perspective, it's like if we leave, which, you know, we're currently thinking about it, which mm-hmm. is weird. It's like we're leaving to go f- kind of restart, or like find other resources and stuff like that. So, like, I bet if someone came, I mean, also, if someone comes here, the, their technology is probably advanced enough where they can radar. Like, they'll know exactly the the components of every mm-hmm. livable planet for them in the whole. Like, at that point, yeah. because we're like, by the time we actually are going to Mars, like, for real, like, we're, our ability to observe other planets would probably be better as well. Mm-hmm. I don't, I just feel like we wouldn't, I hope we can all get along, man. I do. It would be dope though if they came here and like it was like you said it's get get along and like, and also it's like we don't know what life form they take it's like an other an, another life form could look like a blob mm-hmm. but be we conscious yeah. and they thrive off of eating carbon dioxide mm-hmm. and all of a sudden it's like oh and they like the they're like oh like we'll be here and we'll be eating all the carbon dioxide. it's like I because who knows like we don't know what yeah. another life form could possibly be, be anything yeah. literally anything yeah. And then, who, what would be your dream female collab? Meaning, like, Usher and Alicia Keys, my boo. Who do you... That's who's okay. Ray. Okay. That's easy. She's that my would favorite. Be, <laughs> she's my favorite, so... That would be sick. Yeah. That, that's going to happen. That, that's no, no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> Ray. Ray. I love um, it. I love it. Ray. Ray. Yeah, Ray. <laughs> um, you know, like I said, the album, it's coming. What... What are you most excited for people to hear? Or is there any titles that you want? You're really excited just for the public and fans to hear. What am I excited for them to hear? Yeah, what's any certain songs that you're like, yo, I want them to hear this already? Um, dude, literally, I'm really excited for people to hear this album as a whole. Okay. I think it's a great album. Um, I mean, the ones that I couldn't wait to drop. I dropped. <laughs> and then, but but the reality is though, no, like the record, it's interesting because we also like are leaving so many of the good ones yeah. that we, I like wanted people to be able to like, they like have the records, but then they like get to go to the album and there are songs that are better. It's like, mm-hmm. that's to me is like such a more powerful experience. It's like, oh shit, wait, what's happening right now? It's like, like magic. I know it's real. Beautiful, I think, is going to be an important record for people to hear. This, it's the last song. In the, I was going to say, I know it's the last song. Yeah, yeah, it's the last song in the album, and it's about it's about us. It's about the earth, and it's about... It's like a very like kind of pulled-back perspective yeah. of like what's happening a Makes little bit. Think. Makes you think. It also just like... We should probably save our home, because no one else is going to do it. No. Yeah. Type of... Type of it's just like a couple. Just it's just like my. I made that song on the top of a, on the top of a mountain in Malibu. That's I like. Awesome. I rented an airstream for a week, and I. It was an airstream that when I was younger in LA, I saw it on Airbnb, but I couldn't afford it. And I was like, oh my god, like I need to stay at this Airbnb. This this. It was like it's just an airstream just at the top. And I was like, I'm gonna get that one day. So then eventually, like a year and a half ago, two years ago, I was like, all right. It's time. It's time. <laughs> so I booked it for like three months in the future. I was like, this is going to be a little uh-huh. gift to myself in three months. So I booked it and then it came around and I went and I just was there by myself for a week. I had like some friends came and we did stuff 
And, um, but yeah, that was like the first song I like started up there. Like it okay. started with just like this, with just like this big kick drum. Like, poof, poof. This and it was just like, ooh, 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 ooh. and it's just like this vocal thing that I just stacked these harmonies uh -huh. and I just played this like, I was like it was just playing and I would just have it on like when yeah. I was just chilling it was playing from it was and the airstream was like powered by like this little generator that would like shut off I had to like recharge it was like uh -huh. a whole thing but it would just play on top of this mountain this like beautiful like just kind of like <sighs> kind of like tribal type thing like very rooted feeling and it would just play and then every once in a while I would have I would like have the mic recording so every once in a while I would just go and just like sing for like yeah. an hour and I would like chill and then it would just keep playing and then like later in the day or like later a couple of days later whatever or no I think I probably recorded the whole thing in the first day but different parts of the day I would go in there and sing for another like hour straight just freestyle then I sang another hour so I had like three hours of just like freestyle including like a moment where I was FaceTiming my friend who's you can hear her voice at the very beginning of the record <laughs> awesome. and the way I made that record is I recorded three hours and then over the course of that week I was making other ideas too but I would mm -hmm. every once in a while I'd pull that song up and I would literally make my way through all three hours of the freestyle. And I chopped all the pieces that I like highlighted all the moments that I was speaking. Like, because when I freeze, that's how I write. I, I do freestyle yeah. essentially, like melody words kind of coming. And then I, but this one, I'd never done it like this, where I like literally didn't end up even re recording anything. I just like found the parts and literally it from three hours oh, into three man. minutes. So it's all raw. And it's just not raw, potent, my feelings and my opinions about certain things. Like, Nothing crazy, but just like, it was just very honest. And I feel like that record is really powerful. I think it's a really beautiful record and I'm excited. For, I'm very excited for people to hear that record. That's and, the, that, and that's that's the nice and short answer right? for you. And that's awesome though, like you said though, because that's dope to hear. Because I feel like those are the best records when it's one take of however long and you just, like, you don't keep on. Really cool. Yeah, that's sick. It's cool. It was a cool experience. Really yeah. powerful. It was fun. Beautiful. Bro. I, I just want to thank you so much for I'm so excited to see your journey like, because like I said I remember hearing your name like 2017 2018 and seeing you writing and composing and producing for people oh, so right. it's dope to see you doing it now like and really out there like you were doing it already but like like you said you're at the forefront now you're out there so I just want to wish you all the best of luck thank you the rest I know you got one more show yeah one your hometown show. hometown New York I'm very excited, but Chicago. I got a shout at Chicago. Chicago was hitting for me. Like we landed yesterday, it was just like, like the energy here was just, is just. I mean, it makes sense. Like so many legends are from yeah. here because it's just like the. There's just something here that's very rich, very powerful, very just like, and it like oh, you can feel how the blues came uh -huh. from here. You can feel how these just all these legends just came from here, and it's just. Oh my God! It was, and I got to go to this record store today. I honestly need to shout out that record store. They're called Dusty Groove. Ooh, I gotta find oh out. my God! This record store was incredible. I found I had I just like was going crazy in there. Went there, Pequods. You know Pequods? Uh -huh. I think that's how you say it. Pequods is the deep dish, the pan pizza spot I went to last night. Okay, okay. It was crazy. They were so nice, and the lady, one of the waitresses, like I was literally sitting at the bar. And she comes over, she's like, hey, it's so good to see you. She's like,